Hey, you know that time that you were a fetus and you had a nine month lease in your mom's womb? Well, guess what? You left something behind. Yep, just like a ne'er-do-well renter who leaves a half-eaten pizza in the fridge after moving out, you left a bit of yourself behind in the form of fetal cells. And to return the favor, well, your mom leaked a few of her cells to you through the keyhole of your womb apartment in the form of the placenta. See, the placenta is a kind of organ built of cells from both the mother and the fetus, which serve as a kind of highway for the exchange of nutrients, gases, and waste. And every once in a while, these fetal cells find an exit in the porous material of the placenta and they veer off that highway. The ones who don't get killed off by the immune system take root in the body and they burrow into the heart, the liver, the spleen, the pancreas, the gallbladder, all over the place. In fact, fetal cells are able to cross the blood brain barrier. And what we're talking about here is something like male DNA showing up in the form of male microchimeric cells in a woman's brain. This was discovered when researchers at the Department of Biochemistry at the University of Alberta examined brain autopsy specimens from 59 women. Now, 63% of these women had Y chromosome matter floating around their brains. And here's where it gets freaky deaky. If you have an older sibling, it's possible that his or her cells that were knocking around in your mom's body were passed on to you through the placenta. I'm talking about some serious hand-me-downs on a cellular level. Thanks, bro. So here's the really incredible thing about these cells. Depending on where in the body they decide to squat, they sometimes act like stem cells helping to repair damaged tissue. For a mother, they're essentially a transplant of younger, healthier cells into depleted organs. They may even help protect against certain types of cancers, which makes sense because the presence of the fetal cells that survive means that the immune system gave them a free pass. But they're still keeping a sharp eye on those fetal cells. That means that if they see any other of riffraff like cancer cells, they can detect them much faster. On the other side of the coin though, chimeric cells can stir up the autoimmune system and cause problems. In fact, there's some evidence for competition between, get this, cells from grandmother and cells from the infant within the mother. So microchimerism brings up many more questions than answers like, what if any role do they play in the brain? But in any case, it's a really cool portal into the idea that we're not just prepackaged bits of DNA that get unleashed in the world and that's that, we are in fact ever-changing organisms that are acted upon by many unseen forces like microbes, parasites, and microchimeric cells. So there you go. You are not exactly a chimera, a creature that's part serpent, part lion, and part goat, but you are cruising around with at least one other person's cells inside of you, maybe even the siblings. Does this make you feel closer to your siblings or just more annoyed with them? Let us know in the comments below and make sure to subscribe to keep the videos coming.